In this video, we solve problem 6.2.11 from Essentials of Statistics, sixth edition by Mario Triola. We're asked to find the indicated IQ score. We're told that the graph depicts the IQ scores of adults, and those are normally distributed with a mean of 100 and a standard deviation of 15. So we want the IQ score that separates that top 75% from the rest. In order to find this score, I need the area to the left, not the right. Um, since this is 0.75, this area must be one minus 0.75. So it must be equal to 0.25 because that area plus that area has to be one. So you find the area to the left first. So basically we want the IQ score that separates that bottom 25% from the top 75%. Now, in order to do this, instead of finding the X value directly, the first thing I'll do is I'll find the corresponding Z score. So I want the Z score that separates the bottom 25% from the top 75%. I can find that by looking for this area in the table or using Excel to find um, the corresponding Z-score. I'll show you how to do both. In order to do that, I'll share my screen with you. And we'll go here. And notice that that 75% is area to the right. So the area to the left is 0.25, so that means um, since that area to the left is less than 50%, I know that that z-score that corresponds to that x-score has to be a negative value. So I'm looking for 0 0.25 as an area that's in the body of the table, not on the outside, but in the body. So we're going to zoom in and look for 0.25. I see 0.2578. There we go. We've got uh, 0.2514 and 0.2483. Now 0.2483 is 0 0.0017 from 0.25 and 0 0.2514 is 0 0.0014 from 0.25. So this is the closest one we've got right here. And we want the z-score that goes with that. So I want to go over here and find out what the z must be. Oops, where did that go? 0.25. It was that number. So we're in this, this row right here. So that's z equals negative 0.6. And this column, it's the third from the last. And go up to the top, that was zero point, or negative 0 0.6. Third from the last is seven. So this is Z um, equals negative 0 0.67. So again, what that's saying is that the Z score that separates that top 75% from that bottom 25% is z equals negative 0.67. But we don't want the z-score, we want the x-score. So we're going to go back from z's to x's using this formula. I'm going to take that number of standard deviations and I'll multiply by the standard deviations, the actual standard deviation, and then we add the mean to get the x value back. So we are negative 0.67 standard deviations below the mean and a single standard deviation for IQ scores is 15. That's gonna give us a number of deviations from the mean. It's, it's, it's how much this x value deviates from the mean. If I add the mean to that, I'll get the x value back. And the mean in this case is 100. So we will use our calculators to do the arithmetic. That's negative 0 0.67 times 15 plus 100. And that looks to be about 89.95 as our score.
Let's see if my lab statistics likes it. Oops. Where is that homework assignment? We'll go here and we're here. Okay, so I got 89.95 and I'm rounding to one decimal place. So that's 90. Check answer. All right. Now I want to show you that you can get the exact same Z score. This Z equals negative 0.67 using Excel as well. So hang on, we're just going to do exactly the same thing in Excel. Okay, let me clear all these values. Now remember, if you have an area and you want to get a Z score, you have to type equals and then N-O-R-M-S, so that's standard normal distribution, I-N-V. I-N-V is for inverse. Open parentheses, and it tells you what you're supposed to put in the parentheses. It says the probability right there. That's the same as the area to the left. Now for us, for our problem, the area to the right was 0.75, so the area to the left is 0.25, so we'll type 0 0.25 there, close parentheses, and we get a z-score of negative 0.67, which, is exactly what we got um, when we used the tables. So you can use the table or you can use Excel and you're gonna get the same z-score. And then from there, you just take the z, multiply by the standard deviation and add the mean to get x. And you can use Excel as your calculator for this or you can just use a handheld calculator like I do and you're gonna get the same result. And then be sure to round to whatever number of decimal places my lab statistics wants. So make sure you read that fine print. It's usually in blue on the MyLab Statistics website.